Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. This is part one of lesson 4.2. In this video, we're going to focus on identifying congruent figures. In order for geometric figures to be congruent, they have to be exactly the same size and exactly the same shape. So we've got two groups of shapes to look at. On the top, we've got some trapezoids. On the bottom, we've got some triangles. Those trapezoids are examples of congruent figures because they're all exactly the same size and exactly the same shape. Now, some of them have been rotated or spun around a little bit, but that's okay. We haven't changed what the picture looks like at all. But if we compare that to some of these triangles, the triangles are all different. Some of them are different sizes. Some of them, the side lengths are longer or some of the angles are bigger. So those figures are not congruent because even though they're the same shape, they're all triangles, they're not exactly the same size. When we're dealing with congruent figures, we can write out something called a congruent statement, which is just a way of identifying that the two figures are in fact congruent. So let's take a look at a couple of triangles. On the left hand side we've got triangle ABC and on the right hand side we've got triangle DEF. Now I'm going to mark out a bunch of things as being congruent. In our triangles we've got a bunch of congruent angles. Angle A and angle D, angle B and E, and angle C and angle F are all congruent and we've got a bunch of congruent sides. Based on this we can say that our two figures are congruent. They've got all the same size angles and they've got all the same size sides. So what we can do is we can write out a statement that says that these two figures are congruent. Now one thing we have to be careful about is when we write out our congruent statement is we have to match up the congruent vertices or corners of our shape. So if we decide to name our first triangle ABC, then what we have to do is we have to keep the same order when we're identifying the second triangle. Angle A is congruent to angle D, and since we started with angle A, we'll have to start with angle D. B is congruent to E, and since B came next, E will have to come next. And then angle C is congruent to angle F. So we have to call that second triangle DEF based on how we named the first triangle. But this isn't the only congruent statement that we can write. We can change the order on these things. So let's say we called that first triangle BCA. Then when we start naming our second triangle, we're going to have to adjust accordingly. Since we started with angle B, well, B is congruent to angle E, so when we write out this one, we're going to have to start with angle E. C came next, so F is its corresponding piece. And then our last one was A, so we'll have to end with angle D. So the way we write the congruent statement doesn't really matter as long as we match up the corresponding or congruent pieces along the way. In this example, we're given two congruent triangles. We've got triangle JKL on the left and triangle TSR on the right hand side. What we want to do is we want to go through and identify all of the different congruent pieces of these triangles. So let's start off with the angles. Now I think the easiest thing to do is going to be to look at the diagram and the markings that are given to us. We've got a bunch of arcs in the angles that show that those things are congruent. So if we start with this triangle on the left hand side, let's maybe look at angle J first. Angle J has one arc in it, so if we're looking at our other triangle, we need the one that also has one arc in it. So that's going to be angle T. Next let's look at angle K. K has two arcs in it, so if we're looking at our other triangle, we need the one that also has two arcs in it, so that'd be angle S. And then our last angle from that first triangle is angle L. And the only angle we haven't used yet from the other one is angle R. So those are all of our congruent angles. Now if we start looking at the congruent sides, we're also going to look at things that are marked out similarly. We've got dash marks on all of these sides, so we're going to look for the pieces that are congruent to each other or that are marked similarly. So if we start with JL on this left-hand triangle, if we're looking at our other triangle, the one that has one dash mark on there would be the segment that goes from T to R. Now if we look at the segment that runs from J to K, that one has two dash marks on it. And if we check out our other triangle, this one that runs from T to S also has two dash marks on it. And then our last sides, we've got this piece that runs from K to L. 
And matching up with that one, since that has three dash marks on it, we'd be looking at this side that runs from S to R. So there's all of the congruent angles and all of the congruent sides listed out. Now when we're looking at identifying congruent parts, we're not always going to have a diagram to look at. Sometimes we've only got a congruent statement. So here we've got triangle ABC is congruent to triangle HJK. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and identify the congruent angles and the congruent sides. So let's start off with the angles. The nice thing about these congruent statements is that they're written with their corresponding pieces in the same order. So if we look at angle A from our first triangle, that has to be congruent to angle H because they're both in that first position when we're naming this thing. Then if we look at angle B, angle B came second and angle J comes second, so those two pieces have to be congruent. And then angle C is going to have to be congruent to angle K because those things came third in the list. The sides might be a little trickier, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this congruent statement to draw out a picture. And I'm going to mark out all the things that are congruent. Now let's start taking a look at what sides are congruent. Let's look at side AB first. Based on how I have this diagram drawn out, I can see that AB has to be congruent to HJ. Then if we look at BC next, BC has to be congruent to JK because of how this picture is drawn out. And lastly, we've got the side that runs from C to A. That's going to have to be congruent to the side that runs from K to H. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.